Hello everybody, this is Ducey, and we are looking at Encounter Plus again, and today we're just looking at some management and organization. So, uh, as you start to get used to the app, and you know, you're know you used to running encounters kind of on the fly with it, we're going to talk about uh, how you can save stuff and do some more preparation in here, have things ready to go for you ahead of time. The first thing I want to talk about is these three buttons up here on the top right. So these three buttons are, oop, no, sorry, I'm just going to this animated map here. Uh, these three buttons are, first here is your search button. And you notice as it says library, there's a search field here, this kind of slides in from the side. Um, this button and this button, which is the library, are very similar. This library is just gonna kind of open a larger window. Um, and on the Mac, it's a separate window that you can kind of move off to the side. So when I'm on the desktop, I like to do this kind of thing. Um, but other than that, they're pretty much the same. This button is the campaign button, and whichever campaign you have set to be the default, so if I edit this and I, oop, nope, go into it, and then hit the three buttons and hit edit, that kind of edit, you can see here's your primary campaign, so whichever one is your primary campaign, if you click on this, it will take you straight to that spot. So it's pretty much just a shortcut to get you to that spot there. So I'm mostly gonna be in the library here. And if there's any difference between these, I'll try to point them out. Uh, but for the most part, you're gonna get the same kind of content in all three of these. It is all the same content there. Um, it's gonna, they're all gonna work the same way. So I've got a campaign here made already. And if I didn't, I could just hit the plus button, make a campaign, put it in description, choose some art. Um, we'll talk about adding a module and adding players in a moment. But this is usually the basis of where you're going to start building stuff out here. And you can see we've got this campaign here that already has some of that stuff filled out. Now in here I've got a couple of folders or groups as they're called. And if you hit the plus button you can make a group, page, and counter, and a map. All of this stuff is things that you can do ahead of time. So if I do a group, we can call this chapter 3. If I can spell chapter three, there we go. Right, you can see we've got some uh, chapters here made already. And if I hit this little down arrow, I can look inside of the group or I can click directly on the group and it will take me inside. Something else to remember is if you swipe left, let's see, to swipe right, oh, I think swipe right, oh, is that straight to, you know, swipe right takes you back. Swipe left will take you to delete, move and edit and then a big swipe left, or I th yeah, we'll take you straight to edit here, to edit the group. Um, so in this case, it's just changing the name or where it's at, that's one way to move it. So I'm gonna click inside of here. I have a uh, encounter made, and if you check out some of our early videos, I think, uh, I think the first one, um, we talked one way about saving these, but we've got this uh, made, and again, we can make one from scratch here. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to an encounter give it a name uh, dragon attack I can put a description in um, and then I can add a combatant and we're gonna add some sort of dragon here let's add um, let's do a young black dragon cool Bonk. all right and I click that and it's added and you don't really see it here until you come back but there's that young black dragon and save so that's how you can make these and uh, you've seen this in a previous video, but just to reinforce, uh, you can drag this onto your map. And actually, I think to do it, this is one of the things on Mac, uh, you're gonna have to come to like here to do this little trick. But if I drag this onto the map, it creates a marker automatically named. I don't have to change anything. The reference here, this is the, the fact that it's pointing back to the dragon attack. I hit save. And now if I click on that, it's going to give me the information and everything that I typed in. There's a lot of fun stuff that you can do with markers. And I go over all that. Oh, I go over all that in the map making video. I can also make markers to um, this page that I've got here. So if I had some sort of introductory information here, um, I didn't really put anything in here besides a, besides a dragon and saying stuff happens. It'll be, I was, I don't know, I didn't even finish that sentence. Let's make another page and spend a moment looking at pages. I'm going to go back to uh, using this interface over here. It's pretty much the same, just have a little more room. So I'm going to click that plus button, go to page. Here's a new page. It takes me right in here, and I can start to type away my campaign notes. 
or adventure notes or dungeon notes whatever and uh, while I'm here we've got some basic editing across the bottom so if we hit this we can choose like a header h1 or subheaders testing subheaders like h2 right um, and when you hit save you can kind of see we click on this new page what those look like so they look a little bit different when you're in the editor than when it's saved um, so do kind of peek out and take a look at what you've got going on here it's got this nice formatting I'm gonna hit this and hit edit or I can swipe and hit edit so to do bullets I'm gonna type the word first um, first you meet at a tavern nice then you click this and it will turn that to bullets and each time you return you get new bullets then the goblin stabs you in the back okay great uh, we've got these uh, quote markers here and what those do is they'll bring up um, like sidebar text or read aloud text so um, you see before you a black dragon all right gonna highlight that hit the quotes puts it into that block and of course you got bold italics I won't go over those this link linking here is pretty cool so I can um, let's see uh, here are the stats for the black dragon and I'm gonna highlight black dragon and click the link here and I could put in a URL link so it takes me off to a web page that's totally fine but I can also click reference and here are all my monsters players items spells and even chapters and folders in my campaign or encounters I'm just gonna type in black dragon we'll do young black dragon check and now I've made a link that will take me straight to that so here's what it looks like you see before you whoops typo a black dragon here are the stats for the black dragon you click it takes you straight to that stat block very cool so I'm gonna edit this black dragon and also you know you could say you could say um, it was found in this map and I'm gonna highlight this map and link it do a reference here greenest do the little arrow and oh it looks like I just have encounters I could definitely link to the encounter there's my maps chapter 2 uh, amazing map checkbox save and now it is found in this map and you click on this map and it takes you there and you can hit the load button which will pop it up into one of these tabs right over here cool so you can link to any other object in encounter plus very handy now this is going down a little bit of a rabbit hole but since I'm here showing you all about how pages work I do want to show you we've got this uh, like sidebar text but we also have a different way to change that into a slightly different looking read aloud text so let's take a look at that here real quick um, read me aloud so this really would be more like you have some some other notes that you just want to separate out but you can hit this block quote and then if you hit this button on the bottom right, the three dots, you get a couple of options that were not here before. And this one will show you all the HTML that this is. And you see, we've got block quotes there. And the little tricky trick here I wanna show you, I'm not a coder, but what I've learned is if you do class, oops, class equals read, and then you put that little carrot at the end of there, and we save that guy, it changes it to this style so you can have two different styles of block quotes in there you can do all sorts of HTML stuff in there so if you know that stuff get in there and make it look like however you want or um, you can even build out little things R George and the discord built like a dice roller into here the world's your oyster it's HTML go nuts and last but not least if I'm in here with these extra options this last little button here will just let me put uh, a divider Bunk, little divider line between sections. Nice. Look how organized. All right, on to the next thing. So we've got some pages written out here. We've got encounters made. We've got maps made. 
Um, if we want to start moving stuff around, again, this swipe is going to be your best bet. If you said, oh, actually, this belongs in chapter one, you're going to swipe over, hit move, and then you choose what campaign it's going to be in. Or if you had modules, the modules would show up there too. And then the parent is like what folder it's in. So we'll go put it into chapter one and save it. And now when we go to chapter one, there it is. Here's kind of a cool little thing to know. If I want this kobold ambush to happen inside of this map at Phandalin, if I swipe it over and I hit move, I can choose this parent. This parent doesn't have to be a folder. It can be anything. It can be an encounter. It can be a page. It can be a map. So if I click on the map and check the box, it is now buried underneath Phandalin there. So that's yet another way that you can organize underneath your own objects. So maybe you have um, pages for the beginning of sections of your chapters and then you open up each page and you have all the encounters and maps in there. There's a lot of ways that you can organize it, but that is one thing to know about. Cool. Now the next thing I want to talk about for a moment is modules. What is the difference between a module and a campaign? Well, a module is more like a single adventure in a campaign and it's asking if we want to import the default modules. Yeah, let's bring those on in. So here are some modules that have different examples that show how maps are made, example pages, encounters, all sorts of great stuff that you can make in here. So get in here, play around with this stuff, see how it's built out. This will help you a lot. Yeah, see there's some of that organization I was talking about. Important locations are all under there. Battle maps are all in their own folder. Again, however, whatever organization makes sense to you, go for it. Uh, but what you can do with a module, with these kind of single location, they don't have to be a single location, but you can plug them into campaigns. So if I get into this campaign and I edit it, I can add a module directly to this campaign. Let's say I add the cultist hideout and then hit save. Cool. Now, this takes me straight to that module. I'd, I'm actually editing that module if I make changes here. But this way you can build out or bring in separate adventures and add them to campaigns as you need them and remove them as you you know don't need them in that campaign anymore. And when I say add in, um, I'm just talking about under the gear here, you've got import and export so people can make these, uh, make these modules, export them, share them around, and then you can import them and they'll come right in. And in fact, you can do that importing and exporting with all sorts of things. The compendium is like all of your uh, monsters and and uh, items and spells. The campaign is what we've been talking about. Module as well. We'll talk about pack in a minute. So you can export all of that information. So that campaign information is basically anything or compendium, excuse me, information is anything under this compendium section um, can be exported or imported. So what is the pack now? Do you want to import some sample packs? Yeah, let's do it. So we're going to import here. A pack is just a bunch of assets that you can use to either build a map or have tokens. Um, it's just a way to get stuff, to store stuff and organize stuff inside of Encounter Plus. So here's some sample assets from Tabletop, Two Minute Tabletop. We love those guys. Furniture, traps, treasure, camp. So I can go into the camp folder and here's stuff that uh, we can start to bring into our map doesn't quite match the style in this case, but you get the idea. We'll delete that by clicking on it or tapping it again. Um, you can make animated assets, so I'm going to have to do a whole video uh, just on animated assets. Um, you could use these assets to build out um, like spell templates and things like that. And we'll do, we'll do a video on packs that show some of that uh, asset building. But that's what a pack is. It's just a bunch of images basically that you can drop into your map or use to build a map. All right, moving on down the line, we have uh, monsters here. So again, it can bring in all of the uh, standard SRD uh, monster stuff, but we can also hit the plus button up here. We can add in our own homebrew monsters and just fill in all of the information here. But the other way that we can do this so we can take our badger friend here, swipe over, and make a copy of it. This is great because if I want to make a dire badger, it might be easier if I just start with the badger. Size tiny, not a dire badger, they're small. 
beast unaligned this is all the standard stuff you'll be familiar with if you've been playing fifth edition already condition immunities damage immunities senses languages traits so when you add a trait you just type in the name in the description so here's one called keen smell keen smell the badger has advantage on wisdom perception checks and that rely on smell cool you could delete the trait save the trait or i'm just going to back out of it actions this is like where the attacks are so if you click in here the action is called bite and you can type in whatever you want down here as an action that it can take same with reactions same with legendary actions and down here is artwork so if you click in here you can take a photo look from your library or browse files so you could go pick this is an odd thing for a dire badger to look like but you can go pick the artwork click open and it will save that if you don't put a token in it'll automatically take that artwork and create a token that will show up uh, over here so let's actually take a moment to do that I'm gonna hit save on my dire badger here so if I search for a uh, dire badger there it is comes right up and if I click on the name what you don't see is on this other side here it just popped up a browser with images for D&D 5e Dire Badger. This works where you can click on the name of any monster there and it'll just pop up an image search here real quick. So, ooh, Dire Badger. I mean, there's there's a giant badger. This guy's kind of cool. Do, do, do. I mean, I don't know why I assumed there'd be more Dire Badger uh, artwork here than there is, but you get the idea. Let's do one that's pretty common here. Let's do an orc. All right, click on orc. Oh, it pops up on my other screen. And this can pop up. You can do this split screen on the iPad. And even on the iPad, you can just drag these images right in. Automatically adds the artwork from the image search. Very cool. Awesome. So now we will go hit this uh, load button and it drops an orc right into our map and look it's already made a token for it from the artwork adds it straight to our initiative tracker over here fantastic we're good to go if I was searching for other monsters you've got this filter right here search by size type alignment environmental group by challenge rating you can group by type or name very cool and the, uh, the token field that was in there on the orc, again, you could put a different token, like if you had a, a face, one of those from above tokens, you can change those to be separate from the artwork. So you can have both artwork and a token. Oh, and let me go back to my orc. If you click on this, you can quickly show that to the second screen to show everybody, this is what you're fighting. Cool. Oh, and a little trick on the Mac uh, to dismiss this. Uh, if there's not an X there, a lot of times there'll be an X there, but I've, I think this is something that's getting fixed, but you can just slide up and throw it up out of the way. So a little trick there to, to get rid of that and get that out of the way. Cool. The other thing to remember is that you can click on any of these uh, die rolls and it will just pop that up and give us a quick roll. Sweet. Yeah, there's that. Plus two. And again, if you click and hold, it'll roll with advantage, tell you the low and the high. And if you click and hold on a damage roll, it will do a critical where it does the two rolls and then adds the bonus just once, just like it's supposed to. Okay, so now that we've done monsters, the rest of these are going to be very similar. I'll come back to players in a minute, but we've got items, which here's an item. If I, well, let me make a copy of it just to mess around copy type armor rarity attunement if it needs it how much it's worth how much it weighs description artwork same same thing as the monster just different fields here so I'm actually going to cancel that and again you can click the picture find some art and drag it in that's pretty cool I like that there you go oh so nice we'll back up to spells so we've got spells here again all the same sort of stuff. You can make your own um, homebrew by copying it. You can add art. Is this a ritual or not? Spell level. All of the information you need, you just fill this sucker out. Um, die rolls work in here as well, as well as in the item section if there's any die rolls that pop up. 
And, uh, yeah, something cool that we can do with spells here that is just fantastic. If I go into monsters here, uh, I've got an Arakan Shrub. And uh, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to homebrew real quick here. And a, uh, an Awakened Shrub Mage, because uh, why not? And if we add a new trait, the key here is that we call this Spell Casting. And in this description section, if we do a spell tag, so we do spell, and then we do uh, fireball, and end spell, just like HTML there. Save that sucker. Now, when I go to my Awakened Shrub Mage, I can click fireball, and it takes me straight to that spell. It is very handy. All right, now let's take a look at players. So. Got a couple players in here already that you can again filter by level or group by party. I'm going to go ahead and add a new player. And again, you just fill out all of this information just like you would a monster. All right? And once you do that, you save it and you get something like this. It'll give you their basic stats. Um, I don't have too much information on Thor in here that's in here, but you can add pictures so that they'll then have tokens over here. So let me actually save this and let's let's see what comes up for. Oh, look what it did! D and D five E dwarf fighter rather than look at the name because it knows it's a dwarf fighter. Very cool. Uh, I kind of like this guy. Oh, there's a lot of good ones here. You know what? No, I love this one from fifth edition. She's awesome. So I'm gonna bring her in. Bonk! There we go. Got the artwork. Close this. And uh, it updated automatically. Here's Thorin. If I double click, I can place the party or I can just drag Thorin right in and we've got the artwork for her right there. Cool. Now, one last thing with players that I almost forgot is if we go in here, we go edit Thorin. Uh, there's the artwork. You can have a separate token if you want. Add spells and items. So if we add a spell, just check it off whatever spells we've got here and same with items just like with the monsters it will link us directly to these when we click on them for quick reference and again rolls in here everything works it's great okay now one other thing that you may have seen as I've been messing around in here is that uh, occasionally there'll be the option under this three dots to add a shortcut. What that does, it's just gonna give it this name, give it a color, that's great, is that adds it to this section right up here. So this can be all the places you use most often. You can also hit this little shortcut button to get there quickly. This is how you would delete a shortcut and you hit the plus button to add another shortcut. Pick a reference, you can now pick anything that you have, monsters, I like doing these chapter folders a lot, but you can also do directly to encounters or directly to maps. If you've got a world map that you use all the time as you travel around, you can link to that. And now it's super easy for me to get to the map, hit the three buttons and load it, or just view it for reference if I need to. Here's the chapter where I can now get to this map and load it or an encounter and load it. So those shortcuts are fantastic for when you need to quickly get to whatever things you're doing, let's say in your next session. Well, that's it for the basics of managing all of your content and organizing things. Get in there, play around with stuff, try things out. And as always, if you have questions, come hop on the Discord. We've got the Reddit and the Facebook group, but I'm telling you, the Discord's the place to be. It's really active and we've got a great group there and you can get some quick answers if you need help with anything. Hope you have fun slaying those dragons. We'll see you next time.